Hey everybody, Tracking Pat for part two of the ID work on the SLX lathe. And uh, in this case, all the tooling is set up first. So if this is the first time you're watching this, please refer to part one to see how I set up all of the different tools. What we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna show you how to do simple drilling and tapping on the lathe, okay? And so I've got my first tool in here already. It's a 5 16 drill bit. And I'm at the home screen here. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the program mode. Now, normally I would give this a part number or a name, but I'm just gonna skip by that by pushing go to beginning. And I'm just gonna look over here to where it says drill, which is the second button. And it wants to know my Z rapid point. So when I'm drilling, I will use at least a hundred thousandths away from the part just to make sure I have enough clearance. So I'm gonna put that at point one. And then in this case, I've got to drill through this hole at least an eighth of an inch, or I mean one inch deep, okay? Just to make sure that I have enough because I want to tap through this hole. I've already bored out the other side of this part so that I can go all the way through because I'm going to do something else in the next process. So let's say that I go an inch and 200 thousandths deep, okay? So I use the minus sign to make sure I go the right direction. Now here it's asking me whether I want to program in RPM or surface footage. It's easier to use RPM, but remember in the box here, in the green box, it's telling you if you want RPM to use incremental, okay? So I'm gonna set this up at uh, 300 inches per minute, okay? Use the ink set button. And then it's gonna ask me how fast I want to actually drill. And I'm gonna do this at five inches a minute, so that's also ink set and then number of packs. So I'm gonna keep this simple. I've got it on variable packs, but I do wanna remind you if I use the help key, I can change the different types of packs from variable to fixed to chip break. But in this case, I'm good where I'm at. All right, so I'm gonna put in here that I'm gonna put eight packs in here and I'm gonna to use tool number one, which is my drill bit from my previous tool setup, okay? So that's the drilling part. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this hole to a 3A16 tap, okay? So in here, when I go back in here, what I'm gonna do is hit the more key, and in here on the second page, you'll see tapping. And it wants to know what my Z rapid is. Now, I explained this before, but I'm gonna explain it again. In order to do tapping in one of our lathes or even in one of our bed mills, because there's not an encoder on the spindle, I have to use a floating tapping head. And what that means is that this will compress and expand so that at the time of transition from forward to reverse, you don't snap your tap, okay? Now, let's think about this. Maybe there's a reason why it's expanded on the way out from the transition, and because of that, I want to make sure I got enough room away from the part that a tool comes all the way out before it tries to go home, okay? So I'm going to use a larger Z rapid. I'm going to use a quarter of an inch just to make sure I got plenty, okay? Now I'm going to go all the way through again, minus 1.25. That's going to get my full tap through the whole hole. And now it's asking me for the pitch, okay? For the pitch of the thread, what you do is you take one divided by how many threads per inch. This is 16 threads per inch, okay? So that makes it a really easy one because it's 1 16th, all right? If I didn't have that, I'd probably go to Math Help, use the calculator in there, or use my own calculator or the one on your phone. But in this case, I know that it's 0.0625, right? My RPM, I'm gonna run at 300 inches a minute. Uh, I could probably run it faster, but for video sake and things like that with all the doors open, I like to keep everything kind of reasonable. This is gonna be tool number two, okay? So now if you ever had to check to make sure you had things right, there's a couple things you can do. First of all, hit the mode key and go to setup mode. If I look at my tool table, I can be insured because you see the red numbers are in there saying that tool number one is the tap and tool number, or tool number one is the drill and tool number two is the tap, okay? So I know that's right. Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at my tool path. And when I go to my tool path, you see your home position. You can see in here, you see the X's which are showing each pack of the drilling cycle and then the threading, okay? Last but not least, even though I have verification in here, for interior work, it's kind of hard to see anything because the outside of the part's gonna be in the, end, in the way anyway. So I'm just gonna skip that part and go right to the run mode. Okay, so we hit the mode key, gonna go to run. And in here, like always, it's asking me which event I wanna start at. Start starts me at the beginning, that's what I'm gonna do. And then it gives me the choice of either using tracking or just going to run mode. You guys all know me and my name. I always like to start out by using tracking, okay? So I'm gonna go to tracking mode. And when I turn the handle, it's gonna go home. Now, for those of you who haven't seen any of my other videos, in case you didn't know this, whenever I'm in the tracking mode, I become the feed rate, okay? So since I can be the feed rate, I can go through the whole drilling cycle using the tracking. When I'm in tracking, the Z-axis hand wheel is the coarse feed and the X-axis hand wheel is the fine feed, okay? Um, but when I get to the tapping process, there's a point where it has to take over and do the work because it has to reverse the spindle and all the rest of that stuff, okay? So you notice here on the main screen, it's telling me load tool number one. 
start the spindle, push go, or you go to tracking. Because I'm already in tracking, all I have to do is hit forward and then hit go, and I'm gonna walk it through here. And once I know I'm in the right place, I'm gonna let it do the work by itself, okay? Um, for the sake of filming, I have the door open, but I always like people to know that this is one of those things. In tracking, I can run it with the door open, but generally in CNC run, the door has to be closed in order for it to do the work by itself. Okay, so let's get started. Hit forward here, hit go to tell me I'm ready to go and I'm gonna track it over. Looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna let it run. So I'm gonna hit stop, CNC run, and go. Like normal, it shuts off when it's all done. I just want to check and make sure my hole's all the way through. Looks good to me. Okay, so now it's asking for tool number two. So again, I've set up all my tools already. So I'm just gonna take the first tool, set it over the headstock and bring out my tapping tool. Okay. Lock that down and I'm gonna go back to tracking just to make sure I'm in the right area, but I'm gonna to have to let it take over. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the spindle again and I'm gonna hit stop, go to tracking, and then dial it over. Normally I'd have flood coolant or mist coolant or something working on here, but for the sake of all the filming and trying to keep things quiet, I'm just using a trusty old can of WD-40. And here we go. Okay, and there you have it. Pretty short and sweet, right? But the truth of the matter is, if I had to make multiple parts like this, then I might track it the first time to make sure I know what I'm doing, but the next time I'm just gonna hit CNC run and let it make those parts and get it done quicker, okay? So this concludes how to do drilling and tapping. It doesn't really matter what size holes you're drilling or what size tap you're using. The theory and how you do it is all the same. Obviously, if it's a bigger hole, I might have to step my way up to that size hole by using multiple drills, which would mean I'd have to set up multiple drills with different sizes and, and uh, lengths. But other than that, the process is the same. Uh, if I have a really big tap and I gotta run it slower, I would have to switch it to low gear on the 1845. But in this case, I usually pick the slowest speed that I can keep it in high, so I don't have to switch it back and forth. So anyway, my next video, we're gonna talk about how to do more interior work but for now, this does it, so uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and if you enjoyed this last video, don't forget to smash the like button, leave a comment, follow along with us. If you wanna see the next video, just check this one out over here, and otherwise, don't forget to subscribe so you can learn more about us. I'm Tracking Pat, and don't forget to keep on tracking.